Eleven Labs VoiceOver Studio lets you generate and fine tune all the pieces of your voiceover in one place and then export it as a single file. And you can even throw sound effects in the mix. I have another video about using Eleven Labs VoiceOver Studio to add a voiceover to an existing video. There's a link to that on your screen now. Using the VoiceOver Studio that way would be great if you have a fixed length video that needs to stay exactly the way it is. No cuts, no trims, and you just need to add a voiceover to it, and maybe some sound effects. For me, the more likely scenario is creating the voiceover in Eleven Labs VoiceOver Studio, and then take that voiceover to my video editing tool and add in the video clips and images. In most of the projects I've worked on where I need to create or generate the voiceover separately from the visual parts of the video, it's the voiceover that dictates the length of the finished video, for the most part, so that's where I like to start. So let's get started. I'm on the 11 Labs speech synthesis page where you'd normally do your text to speech. I'm going to come over to this left menu and click VoiceOver Studio. If you have any existing VoiceOver Studios, they will show up over here on the right. If not, this will be blank. This is where you create your voiceover. Start by giving it a name. I'm just going to call mine Tigers. If you wanted to start from a video and add a voiceover to it, you would drop that video in right here or upload it from here. Check out my other video where I used a video and then created a voiceover to go with it. We're going to skip that and go straight to create voiceover, this big black button at the bottom. That brings us to this screen. What we have at the top is the speaker card. That's what Eleven Labs calls it. And its name is First Speaker. We can change that name if we want. It's most helpful if you're going to have multiple speakers going on in your studio. So each one of these tracks in the timeline down at the bottom represents a speaker or audio or a sound effects track, all things that you can add. Now we're only going to have one speaker here. I'm just going to go ahead and rename it Narrator. Before I start dropping text in here and generating audio, I want to come down to this little gear icon on the timeline and on the track of my narrator. Click that and now I get to choose the voice and set all the settings the way I want. Click that drop down and you'll be able to pick from all your recently used voices as well as any voices that you have in your voice library and all the pre-made voices. So I'm just going to come down to the pre-mades and I'm going to select Daniel for this. I'm going to leave the model at the recommended default because Eleven Labs knows best as far as which models work best with which voices. At least that's been my experience. And I also want to make sure that these sliders for the stability, similarity, and style, I want those all to default because I think that's a great place to start. So I'm going to go ahead and click this reset to defaults just in case I'd used this one before and made some adjustments. We'll close our track voice settings and now any clip that we add to this track or the narrator is going to use those settings to generate the voice. And I'm going to bring in my script one line at a time here. So there's the first line. We'll hit generate audio. We can click play here to preview. The tiger, nature's apex predator and the symbol of raw power. No fluff, just facts. I don't really know what this no fluff, just facts is all about. So I'm going to delete that. And then I'll click to add another line for him. Just right here, I'll give it a little pause. And I'm using Control V to paste the script in. And if you haven't figured out by now, I used AI to write this script. Generate the audio for that. Silent and stealthy, this big cat can weigh up to 670 pounds. That's nearly three times the weight of a grown man, all muscle and menace. All right, he's taking way too long to say that, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to grab the right handle on this clip, and I'm going to drag it in quite a bit. Now I get this little thing that pops up that says stale, which is saying you've made a change to something you want me to do here, and the audio clip that I've generated does not match what you want at this point. But I want to make sure that it doesn't stretch back out again and get long. I'm going to right click somewhere on this clip, and I'm going to say generate audio fixed duration and that will force it to stay within the length that I've made it rather than if I said dynamic duration, which is the default, it would allow it to shrink and grow based on what it thinks the voice needs. So I'm going to say fixed duration and we'll see if we can't get our narrator to say this a little faster. Silent and stealthy, this big cat can weigh up to 670 pounds. That's nearly three times the weight of a grown man, all muscle and menace. 
Yeah, that sounds pretty terrible, I think. So even though I thought I had the perfect voice, I don't think this one's gonna work. So I'm gonna come back to you, configure voice. I'm gonna drop down Daniel. And I think I'll pick just one of my voice clones. I'll use my news voice. And for me, I found that my voice clone does work a little better when I boost up this speaker style a little bit. So I'm gonna take that up and we'll go ahead and close this. And now I'm getting stale icons on both of these because I've told it I wanna use this Bob News Voice, and these are generated using Daniel. I'm a little surprised that it didn't come up and show this first block of text as stale when we change the text in there. With two tracks here both being stale, we don't have to click these individually and regenerate them. Just come down here to the bottom right where it says Generate Stale Audio, and then that'll regenerate all the clips that are marked as stale. Looks like I'm gonna have a big gap here with my new voice in, so let's just move that a little closer. Come back to the beginning and we'll see what we've got. The tiger, nature's apex predator and the symbol of raw power. Silent and stealthy, this big cat can weigh up to 670 pounds. That's nearly three times the weight of a grown man, all muscle and menace. I'm liking my instant voice clone news voice better than the voices we've tried so far, so we can just carry on here. Drop in a spot for a clip, pasting in my line, generate audio, drop in a spot for a clip, paste in my line, Generate audio. I think you're getting the idea. I'll go ahead and paste in the rest of these right quick. All right, I've got all the lines pasted in here and I did not worry about as I was generating them, starting the next one right as soon as the last one stopped. It occurred to me that if I need to regenerate something and it's right up against the next clip, it doesn't have any room to stretch, then I'll either have to regenerate within the fixed duration or if I try to do dynamic and the regeneration ends up being a little longer than the original, I'll get an error that says, hey, we can't fit this in here. So that's why I just left a little space between all these. So starting with the audio we haven't heard yet. Top speed, 40 miles per hour. Imagine a sports car with claws and teeth. The roar, it can be heard up to two miles away. It's the tiger's way of saying, this is my turf. And trust me, nobody argues. But they're not just fearsome hunters. Tigers are also Okay, that pause was way too long. So I'm gonna regenerate that. They're not just fearsome hunters. Tigers are also fiercely protective parents, raising their cubs with the same determination they show on the hunt. Unlike most cats, tigers love water. Swimming helps them cool down and sharpen their hunting skills. So they're not just land predators, they own the rivers too. Sadly, fewer than 4,000 tigers remain in the wild. Habitat loss and poaching have pushed them to the brink. It's a battle for survival one they didn't choose. The tiger is more than a predator. It's a symbol of strength and survival. Let's not let them become just a memory. All right, that sounds good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck these in nice and close together. If I wanted something to overlap here or there's a space between these is just too much for me, I could always add a voiceover track below like that and then drag down alternating clips here and tuck them. This is usually the spacing that I like where the this handle on the right overlaps the handle on the left of the next line. So even though this is the same speaker, I've got this workaround to eliminate any pauses I don't like. For this case, I'm okay with the little pauses between lines. So I'm just gonna undo and put that back up there and then I'll go ahead and delete this new line that we created this new speaker track. All right, go back to cleaning these up. 
Just moving them in, tucking them in nice and tight. All right, got everything there. Now, how about a couple of sound effects? Let's go here to where we have the roar. And something that's really cool here, anytime you click one of these speaker cards, your playhead drops exactly at the start of that. So it's easy to find where you need to be. All right, let's go ahead and add a sound effects track. It creates this new track here at the bottom. Let's go right about there. And then for this one, I'm gonna say Tiger Roar and we'll generate audio. I wanna preview the sound, but I don't wanna hear the talking at the same time. I really just wanna hear what the sound sounds like. So I'm gonna come over here and click these little headphones and that is solo. So that means this is the only track that'll be playing. Every other track will be muted. We've only got one track here, but if you had many tracks, when you solo a track, every other track is muted. Let's hear our roar. Ooh, that, that animal sounds serious. All right, that's fine by me. I think it's probably gonna be a little bit too loud because we just want the roar in the background of our narrator. So let's go ahead and pull this volume down. I'm gonna take it to about minus 10-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood. Now we'll unsolo this track and we want to see if our sound effect landed in a reasonable spot. The roar, it can be heard up to two miles away. It's the tiger's way of saying, this is my turf. And trust me, nobody argues. We've got this space down here right after it says where the tiger's saying it's of my turf. I think we'll move it down in that area. That might even make more sense. Okay, try that. This is my turf. And trust me, nobody argues. We'll go with that. Let's go out to our end. We'll just click this speaker card and it takes us right there. Okay, let's drop another one right here. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I'm gonna try sound the strength, sound of strength and survival. Let's go ahead and solo this. That isn't what I was looking for. Let's try strong, powerful music. See what that comes up with. Mm, that's strong and powerful. I'm just sliding over here because I can see in this waveform where this space is. And another one right here, another space in the waveform. So I think we'll drop this right about there so that it comes in as the narrator's words are sort of taking a pause. Now let's go ahead and bring this volume way down on this one. I just want a hint of that in the background. Unsolo this so I can see how it sounds with the voice. The tiger is more than a predator. It's a symbol of strength and survival. Let's not let them become just a memory. I don't know that that really works there, but I am just trying to show you how things work and how you can move things around and what you can do. If you have existing audio that you want to upload into your project, you just come down here and click the upload audio button. You saw how we added an additional voiceover track if you wanted to have two people having a conversation or if you wanted to have your narrator and then your actors something like that. And if you want your voiceover in another language other than the one you started with, just come down here to the bottom. You'll see this original. Just click this plus button next to it and it pops up and asks you what target language you want. Drop that down and you got quite a few to pick from here. I'll just pick Bulgarian, add language. And now this is looking almost identical to the dubbing studio. And that's because it's basically what it is. Now our speaker cards, we have the original script down the left. And then on the right, we have the script translated into Bulgarian. And then once we generate the audio, we'll have it spoken in Bulgarian. None of these have been generated yet, and we should probably take a look at what voice it's gonna be using for the narrator for the Bulgarian. So let's click the gear icon, and it's on the Bob News voice, model, default, I'm good with all that. So let's close this out, and we can just come right over here to the bottom and say, generate stale audio. And it'll get to work. You see it's going one by one through these speaker cards and generating the auto. You can also see down here, they're starting to fill in with waveforms. Come back to the beginning. Now just click at the start and play. Now, I don't speak Bulgarian, but that sure does sound like my voice clone, my news voice, sounds a lot like my voice speaking some language I don't know. If you speak Bulgarian, let me know if this thing's getting anywhere close. And you can keep doing this for as many languages as they have. You just click the plus button, pick whatever language you want, and click add language. I'm cutting out all the processing time here because there's no sense in you sitting here watching me watch it process. Then generate stale audio. It starts to generate the lines. Play. Kaplan Doğan'ın zirvedeki avcısı ve ham gücün simgesi. Sessiz ve sinsi olan bu büyük kedi 670 pound ağırlığa kadar çıkabilir. Bu yetişkin bir erkeğin ağırlığının neredeyse 3 katıdır. Tamamen 
I don't speak Turkish either. If you do, let me know if that's accurate. All I can tell you is the audio quality sounds really good and the voice sounds like my cloned voice. So we have three different languages, our original, the Bulgarian, the Turkish. If we want to switch between these languages, we can just click at the bottom on the language we want to go to. And when you come back to original, it hides all those other languages. So this is your cleanest version if you need to make changes to it or see what's going on. When you're looking at it in one of the other languages that you dubbed in, you'll see your original as where it You'll see your original as well as you'll see your original as well as whatever the other language is. The original language is just muted. And if you need to quickly switch to check something, you can just click this unmute button next to original and it'll automatically mute the other language. When you're happy with things and it's time to export, just come down to this lower right hand corner and click the export button. If you want to download, there's two steps to this process. First, you need to render, then you'll actually do the downloading. To start the export in the first drop down, just pick from your original or the languages that you've already dubbed in, pick whichever one you want. The next drop down is what format you want. You have multiple audio formats here. You can also, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but if you wanted to just export the clips, the individual audio clips individually, you can do that. You can export the timeline data and import it to a video or audio editor that will accept it. And you can also get your captions via an SRT file. I'll just say MP3 audio here and export. And in a few seconds, you have the options to view or download. Click the download and you've got your file. Now that was just for the original. If we wanted to get it in one of these other languages that we dubbed in, we just click export. We pick whichever other language. We pick our audio file and export. It'll take it a few seconds to put it together and then you can download from there. And whenever you click the export button and this window pops up, it'll have all your previous exports of this studio. So if you lose the file and need to download it again, you don't have to go through the export process. You can just come in and download it. Now, as far as the cost goes for using the voiceover studio, it doesn't cost you anything to create a studio, which to me is a project, but projects in 11 labs is a whole different feature. So to just create a studio, it doesn't cost you anything, but everything you generate within the studio cost credits just like everything you generate in speech synthesis. And in 11 labs, it goes by characters, so the length of the text prompt. If you generate sound effects within the voiceover studio, each of those takes 100 characters credits or what they're calling quota per generation. Remember, if you're dubbing into a different language, so I started off in English and every one of the generations there, it went against my character quota. When I decided to dub that into another language, I'm generating all over again, just in a different language. So that generation costs as well. The voiceover studio is available to users on the creator plan or above. The creator plan is $22 a month, but it's 50% off for your first month, which makes it $11. And then it's $22 a month every month after that. That gets you 100,000 characters per month, which is about two hours of audio. If you're not using 11 Labs yet, you'd like to give it a try. There's a link in the description. I am an affiliate, which means that if some point after following my link, you end up going with one of the paid plans, I may receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. And I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much for using my link. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video.